Audi guys. So I have a little module here that uh, I, don't, I don't see it too often anymore. I used to see it once in a while, but pretty rare these days. They're getting kind of old, but uh, it's from an older expedition or maybe an excursion. I can't remember. And basically, the power goes out in them. Um, it's pretty simple fix. Uh, it's just some resistors that kind of get overheated and I guess they become uh, desoldered or sometimes they just have crack joints in them. But uh, the note said there was no power, so hopefully that's all it is. That's typically what it is anyway. But I'm going to go ahead and open it because I, I don't remember the pinout for it. I, I probably have it in my uh, note somewhere. Well, I'm, I'm sure I do, but I don't feel like looking. And I remember there was only two inputs, so I'm just going to use my meter to find the um, ground and the power, which is pretty easy to do because, uh, you know, the ground I can just check from a capacitor or something, and then the input power I'm going to check from this uh, voltage regulator here to see which pin it is. But let, let me pull it out of the case here. Okay, and here we have our connector for uh, power and whatnot. Uh, so let's see. Let's switch to continuity. And I'm going to put my black probe on ground here for this capacitor. And I'm just going to touch these pins and try to find the ground. So I did find the ground there. So all three of these uh, bottom ones here are ground. Let's see if there's any, oh, and this one is ground too. So a lot of ground, oh, that one's ground too. So there are a lot of grounds, assuming there's no shorts on the board. But I think it's okay. Okay, so that is ground. We're gonna go with this one right here, which is, if we put the connector in, that's probably pin one. So probably pin one for ground. And, now we have this little uh, voltage regulator here, and we have this guy, which the power should be coming in through him, I would think. Let's see. Actually, let's just uh, put it here. Yep, there it is, right there. So that is pin 7. So we have uh, ground for pin 1, power for pin 7. Okay. So that was easy enough. I'm going to grab two little wires here. And I'm going to plug in my ground. And I just want to see if it's got power first. And that is my power. And... Let's hook it in here to ground and power. And I see nothing happening on the display, but I do see uh, current consumption go up a little bit there. From 0.17 to 0.24. Okay. So I'm going to take this display and I'm going to just kind of move it out of my way a little bit. Because these are the guys that we need to get to. Ah, look at that. You see it was loose. Um, a lot of times they actually get loose and they fall away. So I'm going to show you guys under the scope the layout for them so we know what they all look like. Alright, so now under the microscope here we can see the troublesome resistors we have uh, just two different values we have 68 ohms and then 62 and here we have 68 68 another 68 62 62 62 62 so basically all we need to do is rework all of these if they're missing you know obviously you have to replace them uh, but this one is actually holding on pretty good so I'm just gonna reflow everything let me unhook the power to the device and 
I'm going to put some flux just for all of them. And, um, you know, I'm just going to probably use lead solder here because I think the lead actually uh, will flex a little bit better. And now you see this resistor right here. It doesn't really want to take the solder. We actually might replace it. Unless I can get it to start taking. The, this one took it good. I think it's going to be okay. Sometimes if they're heavily oxidized, it's best just to uh, replace them. But this one seems okay. No, nope. you see how wiggly that is? So I'm going to replace this one. This is 68. I'm going to replace this one. Let me see if I can't get this one up. So I have a ton of these, so that's why I said I'm just going to go ahead and replace it. If, if you don't have replacements, you can you can make it work, but you know. Okay, now these other ones, they all look okay, so I'm just going to redo these. Now that one got messed up. Pushed it too far there. There we go. Yep, that is plenty good. I'm going to add a little bit more solder there. These situations, I like to add a lot of solder to it just to help prevent this from happening in the future. Okay, so this one I'm gonna clean up now. Okay, now I'm going to put my new 68 ohm resistors in. Now my tweezers are a little too sticky. A little bit more flux. That one's a little bit crooked. I'm going to straighten it up a little bit. Just like that. There we go. Good enough for me. Alright, after that is all done, I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to bend this back like it was. I'm going to bend this back like it was. And one last thing, I'm actually, I'm going to <clears throat> hit this um, MOV here real quick.
just because this one likes to crack too. Okay, maybe we'll hit this regulator. Nothing, nothing crazy, just to give it a good reflow there. All right. So now we can put this guy back. I'm assuming everything is okay. We're going to put it back and then give it a try. If I can remember how it sits in here. Maybe I should do it this way first. There it goes. <clears throat> All right, so let's uh, hook up ground and then power. There we go. Now, see, I don't know if that's missing something or if that's just how it's supposed to be. Seems everything is working. This might just be like an off mode. I'm not sure. Can't remember. I think that's normal. Maybe it needs a um, input for that to be lit up when you switch to that mode. That's probably what it is. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to these. So not much of a video, but haven't posted in a while. So figured it was better than nothing.